Hey guys, it's Hans Hobbies, and this is a review of the Axial Yeti Junior Can Am um, X3 version. Um, this is a 118th scale kind of rock racer, uh, desert runner kind of uh, vehicle. Um, and actually, with this Can Am body on it, it becomes a 110th scale vehicle. And kind of what uh, Horizon Hobby and Axial were trying to do with the release of this is kind of have a scale accessory for your 110th scale crawlers um, that you can also drive and even on its own um, as you'll come to see it is a very nice vehicle and you can see that it is, it is a 10th scale vehicle because the heads in here for the driver and the passenger this is the exact same mold head as um, is seen on the deadbolt on um, 10th scale and other other 10th scale axial crawlers that have uh, a driver in it so that's the, that's the thing that makes it immediately obvious and also obviously in real life these side by sides are smaller than a actual jeep or bronco or whatever it is would be um, the car is available for 150 dollars uh, completely ready to run that includes the battery for the car battery for the transmitter um, and speaking of the transmitter, it is this STX2 transmitter. It's, it's very basic, very plasticky, but it is a pretty decent transmitter. Feels very nice in the hand. Has all your adjustments as well as your throttle limiter that a lot of people like. So, um, and then it doesn't have double A's in it right now, but it does come with them. And also, you get a charger for the battery that's included. And you get this USB nickel metal hydride charger which is a lot nicer than the ones you get in the ECX 118th scale vehicles, which has a charger but no light on it. This one at least has a light on it. So I really wish they would include this charger with the the other cars as well, but you know. Um, looking at the body, the body itself is pretty well, uh, pretty nicely detailed, though most of the details are uh, stickers. You can see the taillights in here are stickers. Um, headlights or stickers um, and all the details on the interior is, are all stickers all the gold bits are also all stickers um, the body itself is just black and it has a Lexan piece on the top and the body itself is also Lexan interior obviously is not full depth um, and neither is this storage area it's just a sticker flat area right here but the reason they had to do it like that is so the battery would fit underneath um, one thing that they did give us though is the front bumper is unique for the Can-Am version so that's an actual molded piece though these inserts are stickers and the rear bumper has been replaced with this piece right here with the little exhaust pipe um, these two things right here are stickers but the exhaust pipe is actually molded and same thing with this little roll bar area I'm not sure what that's supposed to be but that's all um, molded plastic and as you can see here the, the car has a solid axle design in the rear with a open differential so this cannot actually rock crawl because it does have a pretty loose gear div you can see I'm spinning it pretty freely there um, and the front runs on independent suspension which works really well and for uh, such a small vehicle and just RC cars in general this has one of the best um, suspension tuning that I've ever seen on an RTR vehicle. The shocks are very plush. They're tuned very well for the size and weight and dimensions of the vehicle. So I'm very happy with the shocks. The shocks are also threaded bodied, um, so you can't adjust them. And the shocks are also different front to rear. The fronts have, the, have these shorter shocks. The rears have these really long travel shocks. So it is definitely going to have a lot more suspension travel in the rear, but it makes well use. Uh, it makes good use of that. The tires are licensed um, Maxxis Bighorn, um, like ATV tires, and they're very soft. They're foam filled, um, and I really like these tires. I, w I wish they they sold these wheels and tires separately, but I've I haven't been able to find these separately because I really want to use these for some of my other cars. Um, let's see, the Underneath, you can see more in detail here. Ignore the cat that I drew on the bottom. The drive shaft here is just a dog bone. 
So I'm not a big fan of that because this bearing is pretty exposed. Um, and the drive shaft itself is also plastic, but it works fine. So it's not a huge issue and metal drive shafts and stuff are available um, if you do wish to upgrade. The only, only complaint I have about the suspension is the rear link here, this upper link, does not allow for any articulation. It can only go up and down. It does not allow for any, any articulation this way. So that kind of makes it um, flip over a lot on road. So maybe you can you can modify these links or cut them off or something like, like cut the supports off or something. I haven't really messed with it because this, this car, as of the filming of this video, is actually not mine anymore. So I don't really want to modify anything. Um, but taking the body off, and it's just these two little body clips in the front, and the body swings open on the little hinge. Um, the battery that's included is a nickel metal hydride battery pack. That's the same as, um, as Horizon Hobby uses on their all of their 118th scale vehicles. And there's a little thumb screw here. You undo and the battery will sit in here. Um, the rear shocks have this reservoir detail. It's fake, it doesn't do anything. Um, the car has a EC3 connection, which is good for a lot of people that have a lot of Horizon Hobby products. That's a very common plug. I, I, I'm glad they didn't go with an EC2 or anything like that. So that's nice. The motor in it is a 380 sized brushed motor. The heat sink is normally not um, included. I added this part, so ignore that. The ESC and receiver is a two in one unit, um, but it is a pretty decent unit. Uh, I only have um, some minor complaints about it, but as far as electronics go, it's, it's pretty good. The servo is also metal gear and has plenty of torque. It's a little bit slow, but has plenty of torque. The front drive shafts are metal. Um, and all the links are just solid plastic pieces, so no adjustability there. And overall, pretty straightforward chassis. Um, it, it literally looks like a scaled down version of the old discontinued 10th scale Yeti. But with all that said, let's take it outside and see how this drives. So you can see me immediately bouncing it off a concrete corner there. So I'll talk about durability first. Durability of this thing is excellent. In the intro, you saw me run into this thing at basically full speed with my 8 scale aluminum chassis Red Cat Landslide. And that's the only time I ever broke anything on this car. Um, I broke the front drive shaft and I hit it with my Landslide. But other than that, I was, other than that having a crash with that 8 scale vehicle, um, this thing has held up really well durability wise, so durability, very very good for this little thing. Um, not really something you have to worry about. And that's a good thing because parts are not as easy to find for this thing as I would think you, uh, it, it would be, especially being a Horizon Hobby product, but um, it won't break much, but it's kind of hard to find parts for this uh, from what I've seen. But driving it in water and uh, off-road like this, um, in the water, the electronics, the waterproofing of the electronics work really well. Um, these seem, seem to hold up. And driving it on off-road surfaces, like they're a little bit bumpy. Um, the, the car is very small and the solid rear axle doesn't make for the smoothest ride. But considering all that, it does drive really well and it's fun to drive. It's peppy and responds really well to all of your controls. Um, one thing you will notice as I drive it is it is a little bit top-heavy on any sort of high traction surface. So it's best to keep this thing on um, loose dirt. It really likes to be driven on surfaces like this. Um, it has pretty excellent traction. The tires are really soft and grip really well. Um, I, I wish the tires were actually easier to find on their own. Because I would like it for some other cars. But yeah, it really, this thing really prefers loose dirt and stuff like that. Otherwise, it does still drive really well. It's just going to flip over a bit uh, a bit more often because of the high, high position of the battery along with the voltage. Um, jumping, this thing jumps excellently. The plus and really well-tuned suspension um, soaks up the jumps and uh, the landing really well. And as long as you stay on the throttle, it, it stays pretty level in the air. These these uh, uh, solid rear axle kind of vehicles like to nosedive a little bit on jumps. So just keep on the throttle and um, it's gonna jump really well. Uh, just bashing it around this dirt, uh, this bit of the dirt track. A lot of fun, again, to drive flips over because <laughs> it's a bit higher, higher traction surface. But yeah, overall uh, for 150 bucks, uh, the scale look of it, the way it drives, the way it performs, the durability. I say it, um, it's an excellent value. It's an excellent vehicle. 
if you got if you guys want it um, for your 10th scale crawlers excellent buy if you want it as its own independent rc car also an excellent buy 150 dollars for all of this scale look driving performance everything fully rtr you really cannot beat this thing um, there are some uh, aluminum upgrades and stuff available from Axial, so you can check those out if you want, but for now, um, 10 out of 10, thumbs up, I love this thing, and I think if you get one, you will too. So, thank you guys so much for watching, um, always subscribe, comment down below, all that good YouTube shenanigans, and I will see you guys next time.